All right, I know there's a few people in the waiting room right now. If this does not sound very good, can you please let me know like right away? Because I'm having problems with it, so I'm super stressed. <laughs> Does it sound any better now? How about now? <laughs> no, I've got a repeater in my ear. Oh, goodness. I'm having a heck of a time here. Connected. All right. I don't know if this is going to work. Call ended. Call ended. Call ended. On connected. Well, hopefully this is going to work because it's the only thing that I can do right now. <laughs> I'm going to take this off of here now. Oh, goodness. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Goodness gracious, can you hear me? This is really super frustrating. <laughs> yeah, you do get extra entertainment. I sat with Mele um, the other day and thought we had it all worked out, and I don't know what's going on. So I have one earbud in, but I can hear myself, and I don't know what's working and what's not working. So obviously, I have a little bit more work to do, but can you hear me okay? <laughs> I didn't put on lipstick, so I hope it's working okay. <laughs> You know, all of these new um, things that we're trying to, that I'm trying to teach myself is really tough. So it is staticky again. Okay, well, I really apologize for that. I, I have tried everything. Um, if I take this out, I'm just going to try something, okay? I don't think this will work. How about that? No, 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 we have a repeater, don't we? Is that repeating if I do that? Okay, I'm just going to say a couple more things. What about that? No, I can hear myself again. That's better? <laughs> I, I don't know what's working and what's not. That one's okay? Okay, I can hear myself talking to myself, which is making me crazy. But um, 
Okay, that's got no crackle, so we're just going to go with that then. Okay, let me just, I don't understand what's going on because it should work. Now we're on. Connected. No, that's not working, is it? No. <laughs> I apologize, everybody. I need to go. Oh, geez, Louise. Connected. Oh, no. Now let me try this. How about that? I think that might work. All right. Okay. I think I might have it. Oh, my goodness. It's actually a miracle. Okay, I've just got to turn this down so that I don't hear myself. Okay, I think everything's good now. Okay, I really appreciate your patience. Thank you so much. Thankfully, I'm the last person of the day, so if I run late, it doesn't really matter. Now, the only problem I'm going to have is my power. I can see my power is draining like crazy on this. So um, let's, let's get under this. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Anyway, okay, so now I don't touch anything. I have to make sure. What, what did I do here? I have to look at my phone. Okay, so my mic is not muted. And then it's muted. I don't know what the hell I did. <laughs> Am I going to get in trouble for swearing? <laughs> Whatever, fire me. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for showing up, everybody. I hope you had a really good day if you've had an opportunity to watch some of the other, um, I was going to say performers. <laughs> I feel like I'm a juggling monkey right now. So uh, some of the other presenters, I actually stayed home today and watched most of them. And uh, some of them are really good. And I noticed that a few people were having some, you know, technical issues themselves, either with things not working or breaking or, you know, going to do one part and actually not doing that and having to quickly do something different. You know, that's live. That's what happens. You know, I, I was, <laughs> I was sitting here the other day and I'm like, okay, I have this down pat, but obviously I don't, <laughs> but I think, I think it's all working. So it'll just take a little bit of time for us to get used to this. So anyways, uh, do I deserve a drink, Chris? I have one. If you guys know me, you know that I come with a rum and coke because, well, it's four o'clock uh, Pacific Standard Time, and that's close enough to five o'clock for me when I have to do a live. <laughs> Goodness gracious, you know, things just happen. It's the way it is, and I, I'm not very good at rolling with it. My um, earbuds weren't working, so I'm, I quickly phoned my husband because our house is like, you know, up the hill here. So I, I bring down my other earbuds, and so I'm running up there like crazy and. <laughs> I said it wouldn't be alive if something didn't go wrong. <laughs> Anyways, as you can see, uh, oh, well, you know, in case you don't know who this crazy babbling broad is, it's I'm Kelly from Kelly's Bee Boutique. And, um, you know, thank you very much for joining me and for all the rest of the presenters this weekend. We've all worked really hard trying to make this um, work as seamlessly as possible. But we are human and, uh, you know, things <laughs> do kind of go off the charts sometimes like they have. So. Oh, thanks, Connie. I love laughing. It's the only thing that keeps me sane and also my Appletons and rum. It can't just be rum. It has to be Appletons. So just to let you know, I don't think Appletons is very popular in the United States of America, but in Canada, it's a thing here. It's a really yummy kind of um, amber rum. So thank you, Natalie. I'm having fun with it. It was a little challenging to do today, but I think it, um, it worked out. It was okay. I just needed a change, you know. So whether it suits me or not, I don't know. <laughs> I just, I need big earrings, but I wear diamond studs. And so I'm like, I might have to take them out when I'm doing these kind of things. So anyway, all right. So um, I'm going to, I've got some fancy stuff here. So let's see if I can actually do this now. Um, so I think it's probably, you know, doesn't, it's a bit redundant because we have this up here where it says, you know, my little blurb. But I'm also, I did this pretty fancy little thing. So I thought I'm showing you both. So if you place an order this weekend, you will get 20% off your entire order. There are a couple exclusions, of course, um, our kits, our tools, and our clearance stuff. Um, uh, what else was I going to say about that? Oh, also, if you do place an order this weekend, your name will go into a draw for a couple of um, $25 gift certificates to my store, which is kind of a fun thing to do. 
So um, we have lots of great new stock on there. So, you know, I have over 9,000 items on my store. It's a bit nuts. So you just go to www.kellysbeboutique.com and you can have a look around. And if you've never ordered from me, um, make sure to um, sign up for my newsletter. There's a little box in the bottom right hand corner where you can sign up and you'll get 20% off your next order because use the 20% off that I give you today and save your other 20% off uh, coupon that you'll get for your next order. So, you know, you can save up lots of money. I need a short slurp of this because already I'm, uh, I'm getting parched. <laughs> oh goodness, um, we have some um, spam here that I need to get rid of. Um, put user, oh block user, there we go. <laughs> We've been having a little bit of a tough time today with um, unwanted guests, so that's not a good thing. Anyway, so I'm just going to leave you right there because I'm sure you didn't need to see me too much. But um, so what we're going to be making today is our uh, new Stephanie bracelet. So this is a fun little wrap bracelet and it came in three colors. And of course, I chose the worst color today for doing a demo. Um, let me just get rid of this banner. I'm still learning how to do all these things. There we go. That's a little bit better, right? So now you can actually see me a little bit better. So um, I've got uh, three different colors. We've got the um, greens and pumpkins, and I think I only have about eight or nine of that particular one left. And that one comes with the antique uh, bronze uh, findings. And then we've got, um, you know, my favorite color. Sorry, I'm putting glasses off and on here because I can't see with my new eyes and I can't see with glasses or without them. It's really fun. Anyway, so here's the um, turquoise and bronze and pumpkins, and this has got the antique bronze and then the brown leather, and that one's really, really pretty. And then I'm going to be making the a purple and silver one, and this one's been super popular. So we do have a, uh, about 20 of each of these left, I believe. So um, just kind of fun. You know, I love to macrame and do barrel moss and all that kind of stuff, and I'm all over a wrap bracelet, even all these years later, so... I'm just going to go back to the comments here and make sure we don't have any more stuff we're not supposed to have. Um, yeah, just making sure there's nothing. If you guys, um, if you guys see anything that you're not that we're uh, not supposed to have on there, somehow let me know. I don't know how. I guess I'll have to keep looking up. There is a little static. Okay, I apologize. I don't know what's going on with this. Um, I'm just going to try one thing here. Yeah. Yeah, just, I'm just going to try something and see if this works. All right, I was trying with the other sound. I was playing with the sound, but it's not going to work. So we're just going to have to go with static. I apologize profusely because I um, I don't know what's going on with this thing today. So again, I will have it worked out in the next year or two. <laughs> just not for this particular event. Oh my goodness, uh, I get so frustrated with this stuff. All right, so let's get making this. I think that um, you know we're just going to have to deal with it. So because, um, oh no, I'll go back to what I was going to do here. So we're going to make the purple one here today. Can you tell I'm slightly flustered? Goodness, this is not good. Okay, so what we're going to be using uh, for this piece is um, uh, one millimeter black leather. And if you buy a kit, you're going to get about two and three quarter meters of leather. So lots to make your, your piece. And then we have about 20 inches of three ply. Uh, this is a black Irish wax linen. And then we've got various colors of beads. So I've got these um, six millimeter melon beads and I've got three different colors of four millimeter beads. I can hear how staticky that is and it's really bugging me, but you know, it is what it is, right? Oh goodness, why it is not working? It's really bugging me. Oh, I'm gonna take this out and try. Is that any better? No, that's not better. Now I can hear myself talking. 
<laughs> All right, is that for now? Okay, enough for that. It is what it is, I guess, right? Okay, I'm just I'm just moving forward. All right, so there's three different colors of our four mil, uh, four millimeter fire polish. We've also got a little button. I've got um, a bail, a nice little charm, a head pin, some head pin, or some <laughs> jump rings, and a tube. I'm surprised that anybody's still here. <laughs> oh, I know my connections, there are no connections to plug in, though. That's the thing. That's what's really wonky because there's nothing to plug in. It's, um, it's my, yeah, the video is blurred too. Oh my goodness, I'm really just not having a good day. So I apologize, everybody. I will probably film this again, but you know, bear with me. Okay, so um, the first thing that we're going to do, and I did it in advance because I wanted to make sure that if anything went wrong, I'd have lots of time. Uh, and it looks like, you know, this is just gonna be one of those videos where nothing's gonna work out. So I do appreciate it. I will make sure to put the code back up a couple times throughout this presentation. Um, I'll just pop it on right now. Oh, let's see. There we go. All right. So that's it. Just use the code fall days and you can get 20% off of your order. Okay. Oh my goodness. Let's see if I can get that to. From the stream. Now I can't even get rid of that. Oh, we're, what in the world is going on today? This is just not uh, a good day for me. Okay. Um, okay, well, there we go. <laughs> anyway, so this is done with a, uh, I've, I've done a little bit of a, a pattern. I've got to put my glasses back on here. Now, I've given you enough beads to follow this pattern, but you could, of course, change the pattern. Now, what I did was uh, I put on two of our sort of light, uh, sort of a opaque purple one, and then I've got a silver and a dark purple, and then I mirrored that on either side of that melon bead. So this is kind of my pattern. It's an odd pattern, but what I didn't want it to do was look perfect around your wrist. I, get, I find a lot of comments where people are trying to offset things and they get frustrated with patterns. So I found that this was a good way to offset the pattern so it didn't look so perfect as it was going around your wrist. So when you're loading it on, that's what you're going to want to do is do two and then your little section and then I've got two and then my little section and so on and so forth. So I just loaded it all up just to make it a little bit easier for us so that we wouldn't be sitting here listening to me chatter with all this static. I have a dog that's very shedy and there's um, hair everywhere in here. So, <laughs> all right, I gotta go back to the comments to see what anybody's saying. Oh, you love me even with the um, wonky sound? Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it because this is the kind of stuff that just throws me off like crazy. I, I am a perfectionist. And when things aren't perfect, it makes me nuts. So I'm doing my absolute very best. Like the video I did the other day was all staticky too. So, you know, that's like, just kind of go with it, right? Okay, so I'm gonna take my Irish wax linen and I'm going to tie it onto my button. So I just wanna, you know, use a little bit and just kind of tie it on and Give that a good pull. And of course, I put cream on my hands this afternoon, which is the worst thing to do before you bead because everything's slippery. But, you know, it's that's the day today. Gosh, and I was really sure that I had this all figured out. And you know what? As soon as I get off of this today, I'm going to say, oh, yeah, that's what I was supposed to do. And then Neela is going to send me a note and say, Kelly, this is what we were supposed to do. Because he helped me the other day. No, I'm not. It's not working. But anyway. And I am going to use four tools today, too. I've got my chain nose pliers, my bent chain nose, my round nose, and my cutters. So you can tell I'm flustered because I didn't even go over my tools. All right. So I'm just going to trim off that little bit extra there. So all we're doing is securing that and just cut off that little bit. And then what you can do is um, I'm not going to put very much because I don't want to um, get have it get in the way of what I'm doing, but just a little tiny dab of GS Hypo glue. And the hardest part of this whole thing, again, as I always say, we'll be getting this in the end. Oh, it actually worked. It's a miracle. 
Okay, so we've got that attached. Now we're gonna take our leather and we're gonna run it through the shank of the button. And let's pull that through. And it gets a little bit, you know, you've got a lot of stuff here, so you wanna make sure you're not getting it all tangled. And I know I'm going to, but I'll just kind of roll with it. So I wanna to try to get this evened up because there's a lot of, there's a lot of leather here. And normally I wouldn't have the beads on there, but because of the um, you know time and everything today, I thought that's what we would do. So now what I do is I match it up so that they're even. I just run my fingers down and make sure that it's at the halfway point. You can see that it's not. So I just pull the button down until the button is at the halfway point of the leather and it's not cooperating. Oh, there's a little kink in there, that's why. And you can see I'm still holding it back here because I know that'll get me to the halfway. So that's halfway. Now what I'm gonna do is take my, off, my top one and offset it by about six inches. So I just want this one a little bit longer on the top. So I'm just gonna pull it up by about six inches. And that's because we're gonna be creating some barrel knots. Okay, and the barrel knots take up a little bit of room, but I've given you lots of leather. So if it doesn't even out, it doesn't really matter. So this is a one millimeter um, leather. So yeah, the coupon doesn't work on the uh, gemstones because you're already getting 50% off on them. So thank you for mentioning that, Diane. Yeah, I'm gonna blame it on the um, lousy uh, Canadian weather or something. Maybe that's what I'll blame this all on because I swear I really did, I practiced all week. <laughs> uh, by the next time it'll be fine. Okay, so now I'm gonna make a barrel knot and I need to encompass this um, Irish wax linen that I've got here. So I'm just going to lay my uh, barrel knot tube on top there. And then I'm gonna take my outermost one, just gotta make sure that that's on the right side of it. And I'm going to bring it towards me and under, so like underneath, and then I'm just going to wrap a couple times. So I'm going to go once, twice, three times. Oops. And now, I, because I have my beads on there, I, I'm going to have to kind of like pull this through. So I'm just holding that down with my hand. Now I'm taking that end and putting it through the back part of the barrel knot tube. So this is not the one that I was, or this is the one that I was working with, isn't it? Yeah, and it's going through the back end there. And then we'll just pull that out and then I pull. And I know you, you can't see what I'm doing, but I have to hold on to the barrel knot, otherwise it goes all over the place. So that's what a barrel knot's gonna start to look like. And then I'm going to push it up and then I start to tighten it up. So I'm just gonna pull this around so that it's where I want it to be. And then just pull. I'm not gonna worry about where that is all landing right now. It'll all work out in the wash. There we go. And now it is one millimeter leather, so it can break. So don't tighten that up so tight that um, you break your leather, okay? Now, the other thing that I wanna do is tie just a little tiny baby knot in the bottom of my Irish wax linen because I don't want to lose all these beads on the floor because then that would really set me off today. <laughs> that would not be good. Okay, so now I've got my piece of leather and my Irish wax linen that I'm going to sort of boss into the middle and that's what we're going to start with. So there's many ways of attaching and I actually even just forgot my clip that I was going to use. I um, Let me get rid of all this extra stuff. I have a, a clip that I always use when I um, work on these boards and I actually forgot it. So what am I going to use? I have another, I have a way that beadshop.com used to do these years ago. Um, and we'll start off with that. So I just have a, like a little loop of um, just some cording that I have and I'm just going to pop it on like that just to kind of secure it. But I'm going to go, let's see, where do you see? You see there? Yeah. So now all I want to do is maybe I'll just use one of these clips. Sorry, you can't see because I'm, I'm kind of all over the map here. I'm just taking, oh, something's really making a noise. Um, I'm just taking a clip like that and trying to get that to work because I forgot my other one. Honestly, guys, I, I know what I'm doing, but it's just not live today, right? Let's see, that's not working very well. Well, we'll figure it out, right? Okay, so all I've done is just kind of attached it like that, just so I've got it 
you know, sort of stationary. And then this end piece, what I'm going to do is push my beads up. And I'm trying to make sure that you guys can see what I'm doing here. And I know it looks like a pile of mess right now, but it will get all straightened out in a second here. So, okay. Um, there we go. Okay. So I want to keep my two, um, I want to keep my two pieces of leather uh, on the outside and then my Irish wax linen with the beads on the inside. So then what I need to do is uh, have this nice and tight to make this easier. So I'm going to use another clip here and I'm going to just put that <laughs> at the end, but now that pulled the other one off. So <laughs> oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. somebody say a prayer for me today, would you please? So really what I want to do is just make sure that this is in the middle and these other uh, pieces of leather are on the outside. And let's just hope that this is going to be tight enough. <laughs> oh, I'm having a good day here. Okay. Now I think we can see. Is that all good? Okay. Take the glasses off. Static went away. Okay. Well, I'm just going to just hope that everything's going to be okay. All right, so what we're going to be doing is just a whole succession of um, macrame um, square knots. And if you haven't done them before, they're super easy. I have lots of other videos that are maybe a bit more close up. But all we do is like P's and Q's. So I'm going to take the one on the right and go over top. And then I'm going to take the one on the left and go underneath and back up through this hole. So I just go up like that. And I always hold on to that whole um, business in the middle. So, and I know it's hard to see with this clip here, but it'll get easier as we go, as we go along. Now, the first one never looks right because everything's kind of cockeyed. So don't worry about that first one. Just kind of, you know, boss it into where you want it. There we go. So I'm just kind of holding that down. And yeah, i got to pull that tight. And now I have to do the other side. So I'm going to do my Q and take my other side and go back up through the middle there. And again, I hold on to that. So that's the way that we trap those beads in there. So I am pulling tight, but I don't want to pull so tight that I end up um, breaking my leather because that would probably be something that's going to happen today, right? <laughs> you know, that's the way things go. And if it happens, it happens. I just, um, I'm just going with it today because otherwise I'll just probably start crying. <laughs> the other day when I was trying to do this whole thing, trying to get my uh, stream yard working properly. I was darn near tears. <laughs> I just, I don't understand technology sometimes. I mean, I, in my brain, I understand it, but then when it doesn't work, then I get frustrated. And so that's life. So if you watched my video the other day, you would have heard me talking about um, forest fires, but we finally got some rain here, not much but we got a little bit of rain here, but just enough to kind of um, push away some of the smoke, which is great because a lot of us were having struggles breathing. So it's been a little better. So now you'll, you'll see that these tend to want to pop up. So you sort of have to boss them back a bit. Um, you know, as I say all the time in my videos, you know, you, when you're creating jewelry, you're the boss of it. So just make it do what you want. So now we've done our first pattern part of the pattern. And now I'm going to go around this melon bead. And I did this just for a little bit of contrast to have a little bit of a larger bead pop out. You know, I just like some unexpected things in jewelry. I think it looks a little bit nicer. These really are tiny. I just saw somebody ask what size, uh, Mike. Um, so these are all four millimeter and then this is a six millimeter melon bead. So they're, they are very small. I didn't want a very big bracelet. I wanted something um, sort of small because it's a double wrap. Now, if you're making this um, from, you know, products you have at home, you could make this into a triple wrap. So I've used approximately three meters, um, which is just over, uh, it's about three feet, um, uh, sorry, three yards. Um, you could maybe add another yard and a half or meter and a half or whatever to try and get one more wrap. It's not an exact science. When you do this kind of stuff, you sort of have to play with it a little bit. Thanks, Michelle. I'm hoping you guys can see it okay. I wanted to get my camera down a little lower, and then when I put it lower, you couldn't really see anything. So, whoops, 
We're snapping off again. Sorry, that probably didn't sound so nice in everybody's ear. This is a, a oops, now it's coming out the other end. Ah. Oh. There's really um, something in the airwaves today, isn't there? There's something that's trying to make this as difficult for me as possible. <sighs> I've been a good girl. I really have. But I don't know. Something's not working for me today. I'm just going to have to be really <laughs> All right. When I macrame, honestly, I do it in my hands, so I'm just not going to worry about it. I'm not going to worry about that um, one that's popping off there. You know, if you just tend not to worry about things so much, then they won't bug you, right? <laughs> I had to take my sweater off because I was sweating. My husband's got the heat up in here, and it's making me nuts, and I can't complain. that He's been such a trooper with this whole moving to the new place. Okay, i got to get this down here somehow. I really wish that I had my other clip, but I don't have it, so I knew I'd forget something. Oh, thanks, Diane. You're so sweet. You know, I really do have the best customers and viewers. You guys are always so, so kind and appreciative and leave such nice comments, and, and I really do appreciate it. Some days I just feel like I'm swimming upstream, and, you know, it's a lot lately, but I, uh, I am bolstered by the people that surround me, so I'm very lucky to have great customers and great staff and great a great husband. I'm lucky that way. So you can kind of see how I'm going along here. I want to maintain my tension. Um, I want to, you know, it will bow up a little tiny bit. You might see some looks that are a little bit bigger than others, but uh, it doesn't really matter. I mean, if you want, you can go kind of nuts and make it look absolutely perfect. Um, but uh, who's got time for that, right? So. You just had to take it two rows of crochet. Oh, goodness. <laughs> well, I apologize if I'm sending my bad stuff over the uh, <laughs> interwebs. <laughs> oh, well, you have to laugh, per person, right? That's what life's all about. You know, I've had um, I've had a lot go on in my life, and uh, I say if I didn't have my sense of humor and the ability to laugh, that I wouldn't have a lot left. So. I think that laughter can get us through a lot of things, and I know that that might sound like a platitude, but I do believe that um, you know, you know, how you uh, feel about things is is literally a choice. Some days, I have have suffered from chronic pain, and right now I'm absolutely screaming in pain because this position is just horrifyingly bad for my body. But um, you know, you do what you got to do, and then uh, there's Tylenol after. <laughs> so. Oh, yes, laughter is the best medicine, right? Well, I like doing lives, but what I don't like about doing lives is I don't like the unpredictability. I don't like it when things are not working because a live for me is really tough, be, um, and not because it's live, because I actually like being live in that I get to banter with people. I miss that part. What I didn't appreciate before was... Um, when things don't want to work, like this stupid sound is so frustrating when the uh, sound doesn't work or when there's, um, like I live way out in the country and we only have one internet provider out here. And so if it goes, I'm in trouble. There's nothing I can do. There's, I can't even use another company and it's not always the best. So I am at their mercy. And so if I do drop off, <laughs> I'll come back. Um, I should have said that at the beginning. So what I, that's what I don't like about lives is that there's things that can go wrong. And I honestly, I tried this so many times. I know I've said it a bunch of times, but I tried it so many times uh, to make sure that this was all working perfectly. And I phoned Savannah. You've, a lot of you have met Savannah on our lives that we're doing on Wednesdays. And um, I said, I think I got it. It was working. And so I told her what I did. And I came down here and I made sure I, I did it again. And it worked. And then I did the same thing today. And it didn't work. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know why. <laughs> it's just so frustrating. So, so as you can see, um, I'm just going. I'm just doing the same step. I, I, after I did this one for the kid, I was like, well, this is probably not going to be the most lively um, 
show that I ever do <laughs> because, you know, it's the same step. It's not very difficult or anything. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. I appreciate that so much. I am trying hard. So now if you are making these at home and, you, you know, if you're doing it, you can, even if you buy the kit, you can always make it your own and do other things. You could um, put metal beads in here. So instead of these melon beads, you could put like a, a metal bead or something, or, you know, you can really do anything you like. Um, I kept it a, a, a bit on the smaller side because it was a wrap bracelet. So I don't like wrap bracelets that are really chunky. They tend to look a little better when they're a bit on the uh, smaller side. So I was kind of move that up a bit. And um, so you can kind of do anything. Now you can see that I actually am finding, whoops, there goes my thing again. I'll just try and do without. Um, I am finding this actually a little bit easier to do uh, by pre-stringing on my pattern because each time you, like if what I was, the way I did it before was I would put on my pattern and then I would make up that little row and then I would come back and put more on. So I was taking it off and on and off and on. And that was just a whole lot of waste of time. So by pre-stringing on the beads, it really is um, easier because you're not gonna make a, a pattern mistake and it's just a little bit um, less, you know, fiddly because you're not putting this back off and on. So you can see I'm doing that in my hand without any tension and it's actually working okay. So if you don't have a board and if you are fairly dexterous, you can probably do these without too much trouble. You could even just take a piece of tape and um, tape this part down and then do this in your hand. So it's not perfect. Uh, doing it this way, I end up with a little bit more of a loopy look, but you know, it's working for me. And you know, with me being a perfectionist, that um, is a okay today. <laughs> Did you guys watch Poor Candy this morning? <laughs> this poor thing, she had literally no voice. Oh, I felt so bad for her. Everybody's been so sick lately, though, it's going around like nuts. We just tend not to get too sick in our house here because I never leave. I never go anywhere anymore. I'm just home. And the only time I go out is if I'm maybe going to get some groceries and that's it. So managing to stay healthy. But all right. How are we all doing here? Yeah, a baking pan would work too. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, Bob was a hoop. We love Bob. <laughs> He's a good sport. <laughs> Uh, I couldn't get, I think, I'm pretty sure that's Aaron, her husband. <laughs> um, I, I couldn't get uh, my husband to do this. I've asked him if he would, you know, leave his business and come and join mine. And he looks at me like I have nine heads when I say something like that. <sighs> yes, he is a good husband. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was cute. I like that they used name Bob. I was telling my husband, because he was watching it with me when we were watching Candy, and, and he's like, I said, whoops, they said, why do they call him Bob? And I said, well, I don't know. <laughs> Not really too sure, but it's kind of cute. All right, so now I'm having some challenges as to where I'm going to I'm gonna hook this on. So I'm just going to get creative and try something else here. So I want to make sure that you guys can see. So I just can't pull too hard. All right, time for some more Appletons. Michelle, your husband helps design? Oh my goodness. Well, I don't think my husband would be very good at this. And I don't, well, per, first of all, um, my husband is colorblind. So this would not be a really good uh, hobby for him. Um, he can see colors, but he only sees primary colors. Oh, Bob is his beady name. Oh, that's cute. All right. Well, this little gizmo that I thought was going to be such a creative thing is not working at all. <clears throat> well, you know, you, when you got to fly by the seat of your pants, you just make it work, right? Candy has been doing um, on-air kind of stuff for so many years that I think this is the kind of stuff that does not rattle her at all because she's just... She just somehow makes it work. I don't know. I've watched her for years. I actually, in my memories on my Facebook page, came up when um, 
she came to Seattle some years ago when they had the, uh, what was that? Beat Fest, I guess. And that was, um, I was stalking her and <laughs> I, I had to go meet her. And that was how I met Candy was at Beat Fest. And then, um, we sort of, you know, got to know each other a bit more from just doing other things. But, um, that was how I first met her. And I was like totally fangirling all over her. <laughs> Poor woman. <laughs> She's so gracious and so used to it, right? Yeah, I would put scotch tape on it, Joyce, if I had some right now, but um, I don't have anything else in my uh, workshop here where I am. And so I am going with what I have because that's what you got to do. When things are not working, you just do what you got to do, right? And it, it's working. This, this is not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but um, it is it is working. So, so that's what we've got so far. Oh, look, there it comes off again. That must be a really nice noise in your ears, too. I apologize. I think this one is going to uh, end up a short one. I might just sacrifice this and uh, not make a full one because this is frustrating the heck out of me. But oh, speaking of jewelry being made, so, of course, it won't be this piece because this is not something I would ever sell. Um, <laughs> But I've got a new ready-to-wear jewelry section on my site because I, I don't own a physical store any longer. I just have my website. I hate to say just have my website because um, I have I have just as much on my website as I have in my store pretty much. But um, I have no place to sell my jewelry like I used to, so I've started putting it on my website. And I didn't think anybody would buy it, and people are buying it. So thank you to the people that are buying it. So I did a... Um, I made a piece on Wednesday and I put that up today. There's only a couple on there because I just started doing it. Um, but you'll start to find uh, jewelry on there. So if you want a piece of ready-made jewelry or, you know, that's where you can find it. So, oh, you are so welcome, Laura. You know, it's what I love to do. Uh, I never, I never thought that, that I would love something as much as what I, how much I love doing what I'm doing. Um, I like making jewelry, but I think I like teaching people more. I've always been um, what I like to call like a like a caregiver. Um, I love to help people. And years ago, I went to a like a career night thing at, at a local college um, to see what I should do. And they said I should be a nurse or a police officer. And that was funny because I actually went into both lines of those work for a while. Um, and I guess that's because I have always enjoyed helping people. And whether or not that is, you know, working with handicapped kids like I did for years or working in a jail like I did for years and now um, helping people create jewelry uh, in a quick, sort of an easy fashion. I don't know if I'm making this look easy today, but um, that's sort of my goal is just to help people um, make jewelry. And that's my little tagline on my YouTube videos. Um, I say, you know, that I want that, you know, people always say I make it look so easy. Well, because it is jewelry making is easy. It's learning the sort of the tricks and working with what you've got. Like I'm having all kinds of challenges today, but I'm just rolling with it. Um, you know, Candy had a big challenge this morning with her. Um, you know, they kind of just had to change things on the fly. You know, everybody's having issues and you just kind of got to go with it. So I, I think that I meant to do this. I am meant to, to do it. Although I wish I'd done it. Uh, I wish I was 20 years younger. I really do. But <laughs> that's probably my biggest challenge. So yes, you could design this in, um, in advance, Terry, that's for sure. And then the, just because this part is so easy to do. So you could just do this in front of the TV. And of course, you would have it taped down or something a little uh, better than what I'm doing. Um, normally, what I do is I use this piece of um, string and tie it onto the board and everything. But uh, when you get to this length that I'm at right now, it gets really hard to work it. And so then I would have had to take it off and everything anyway. So we're just going to roll with what I got here. And then I'll talk about um, measuring and putting the, uh, like the, how to finish it off and everything. How am I doing for time? Oh goodness. I only have 20 more minutes. I better like hustle up here. Hey, eh? Okay, well, you guys get the picture here, right? I think I'm 
I only have a couple more beads, so let's just finish off with these last couple of beads. The good thing is that I am the last person of the day, and so if I run over, um, nobody can do anything about it. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's whatever age you uh, learn to make this, it doesn't really matter, right? I wish that I had learned how to make it a lot earlier too. So I'm just going to end right there so that I don't um, run over time too much. So I'm just going to cut this off. So this is not as far as I would go, but I'll show you a completed one and, and what I would do. Okay. So sometimes we just have to um, carry on. I would like to say as if we were normal. And um, so that's what I'm going to do right now is just carry on. So I would have, you know, done this. And then what I would do is I like to take it and measure. I think this is the one that fits me. Let's see if I can do this around my wrist here on camera. Is it this one that fit me? Yeah. So the way that I measure this is the difference between the end of the button and where I'm going to end is about an inch or so, maybe an inch and a quarter. So you can see that that's where the end is and my button comes to about here. So that's just about an inch and a quarter. Depends on how you like to wear it. I probably would go a little big, but this is leather so it will stretch out. And you can see when I took a little bit more care, how nice that looks. But my knots are really nice in there. So that's how it, it should look, right? Okay, let me just have a little drink here. Okay, so at the end here, what I'm going to do is I want to um, take my, I'm going to do a barrel knot, and I'm going to do it like I did at the beginning. I'm going to encompass this Irish wax linen. So I'm going to take my little tube and I'm going to place it in between here. And then I'm going to put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. Oh yeah, miracle, I can see. Um, there we go, gotta get this out of the way. Okay, so I'm gonna go around three times. And then pull that one that I was working with out. And you can see you've got tons of leather left over here. So, you know, I give you lots of beads and lots of leather, so you should have enough to get it to any length you want. So now the key with barrel knots is keeping control of them. So I want to push that up right on top of that last stitch there. So you can kind of see it. I just kind of make it work. Sometimes it can be a little futzy and you might have to like kind of twirl a little bit. And then when you get it where you want, you're just going to tighten that up. And again, don't pull too tight. You don't want to end up with your leather breaking. Okay. So now I am going to take my little bale and I'm going to run all three things through that. And that's always fun to do when they're all different lengths, but I'm just going to marry them all up at the end here, sort of, and push those all through. Now you're going to go through this part of the bale, not the loop. The loop is where we're going to hang our charm. Thankfully, it doesn't matter which kind of order that goes in. So run your bale through there. And then just kind of pull everything down. Do I have a knot in there? Of course I'm going to have a knot in there today. <laughs> why? Oh, why? There we go. Okay. Pull down. See, so when I do my YouTube videos and then this stuff happens, I edit it all out so you never see. Okay, and now I'm going to do another barrel knot. So now it doesn't really matter which one I'm working with, the top or the bottom at this point. So what you can do is if you want, if you're worried about this Irish wax linen um, going somewhere, what you can do is just kind of go around all the leather and then come back up through the top here. And, and make a little knot, but you don't want to go so tight that you cut your leather. So we're just going to kind of do like a little um, surgeon knot, go through again, and then just kind of tighten that up a little bit. That's just so that it won't come off, but I'm going to be doing another barrel knot on top of that. There we go. Just kind of, so it doesn't look very pretty, but you're not going to see it. Okay, so put that back there. Now we're going to put that in between again and do another barrel knot and we're going to encompass all of that in there. So I'm going to wrap around 
once, twice, three times. And always make sure you're grabbing the right one. It's kind of hard when there's a lot of stuff in the way there. But if you get used to it, you'll soon figure out which is the right one. Because I get that question a lot, like, well, how do I know which one to pull on? And the only thing I can really tell you is to just practice. Keep practicing until you get it down pat. That's the best thing to do. And just take like an old scrap piece of leather. Everybody's got something that they, you know, wouldn't make a piece of jewelry out of. And just keep practicing until you kind of get them right. Okay, so what I would do now then is you get to this point and I would wrap it back around your wrist, you know, like it's kind of hard to do on camera. But I would wrap it around and see how close you are. <laughs> it's really hard to, <laughs> this is a, this one's short too. But I would wrap it around and now if you found that, oh gosh, I should have made that longer, make another barrel knot. You know, maybe stick another bead on, do another, you know, you can always add something here. So I don't worry about that kind of stuff. So now I'm going to cut this off. Now you want to make sure that that's in there fairly tight. But the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to take some of our GS Hypo. And again, I'm not going to put a lot on right now because it just gets in the way when you're filming. And just put like a little blob of it right in there. And, you know, I would actually, I don't have something to wipe this on, but um, you can see I've got like a big blob there. But I would kind of go around here and put, um, I'll show you with something else. I'll show you with a tool. So instead of actually putting that on, what I would do is I would take my glue and I would put a big whack of it in there. And then I would put another little bit there. Okay. Now you're going to take your uh, button and place it in between so that you know how big to make it. And I want that about that big. And I'm going to make another barrel knot. So we're just going to go around three times. And then take the end of that and go through. So I'm just kind of, I can't see with my glasses on in there, but I see something about, yeah, that's very true, uh, Julie, is that, um, you know, it's learning sort of how to MacGyver things. And, um, you know, like when I, I was watching Jill McKay and when hers broke, I thought, oh my gosh, what's she going to do? But she just showed you how to, you know, she's like, oh, not a big deal. Let's just go with it. And I, when I was making one of these, um, the, when I first made it, I broke my leather. And so I thought, okay, what am I going to do if I break my leather? And so I was actually playing with it and trying to I'd piece in leather. And it did work okay. So if you were to break your leather part way down, I would just like piece it in up here somewhere or go back until it's going to be in a place where you wouldn't really see it. Like just knot it together because you're never going to see it on something like this. It's, this isn't looking as nice as I would like it, but it's close enough. Now, in the end, you can kind of do whatever you want. You can just trim those off, or you can tie a little barrel knot, so you can just kind of go around twice and um, finish it off by putting that through the end there. So, you know, when it's your piece, you can do whatever. If you have some larger hole beads, like maybe um, a 6 aught C bead that goes with this, like maybe if you had a pretty purple or a, a silver, something like that, um, you could uh, finish this off with some seed beads on the end. But I just kept it really simple. But you could um, also take some, Tear Cast has some really nice little Heishi beads that have a large hole. And uh, those would look really nice dangling off the bottom. So, you know, it's your, your piece. You just play around with it until you like it. So I've just kind of done that. And then trim and trim. And then I would pop some glue right there where that crosses over. And then right there. So you always want to put it where it's going to sort of get some stress points, okay? And then that um, will fit in there nicely. So now what I want to do is make a little dangle. And you can make your dangles with whatever bead you have left over. Like you'll have you'll have plenty of beads uh, left over. But what you're going to do is just take your head pin and pop a bead on there. And then you're going to take your chain nose pliers. And just place it right above the bead like that and then push away and you're going to make a wrap loop by going up and over and down and take your round nose pliers and turn them and then just make your little loop and we're just going to wrap that up i think that's how i did it you know sometimes i have to look and see what did i do okay yeah that's what i did <laughs> 
did I attach that like that or what did I do? So you can make this a messy wrap or you can make it a perfect wrap. I'm just gonna wrap three times and then be really careful that you don't um, break your bead. And that doesn't really have too much of a burr, but I'm gonna push that down very carefully. And now I am going to take one of my jump rings and open that up. And I like to put my bent chain nose on one side and my chain nose on the other. And oh goodness. Okay. Well, the sound may have not been the best, but I did my best today. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna run that through the end there. And then you just tighten that up. And I always give you an extra jump ring because jump rings are notorious for breaking or for not working and being silly. So um, you'll always get an extra jump ring in your kit. You should anyway. And that one doesn't want to work, so I'll just make it work. Okay, so then that's what you'll have. It's just like a little heart and a little dangle on there. So, okay, so there are the, um, that's what I made today. Look how much time have I got here? Oh, I want to show you one more thing. So we, we started making these little um, bead mixes, and um, everybody's been loving them. We're, we're almost sold out of, of what we've got on there. And so I just whipped this one up this morning, and this is a bead cap mix. So this one is kind of fun because it's got really unique, um, or that's not a bead cap mix. This is a cord end mix. So I've done um, all the different colors. I've done antique copper and gold, and there's another gold. And antique bronze. So this one are like the glue in ones. And this one is like you can add a glue in or you can put something on like your, your wire through there. This one's kind of fun because it's got a scalloped end and we've got gunmetal. These ones are really cool because you could make a really neat looking tassel and glue it up inside there. They're quite large, but you get a pair of everything. So there's 16 beads in there. It's worth about $9 and I have them for $5. So they're a really good deal. So those are on the um, website right now, and there's only nine available of those. And those are just under uh, bead mixes. I can't remember exactly what I called it, bead mixes and findings or something like that. But that's something new that um, we just started doing. So, all right, let me just see if I can get you back to me now. Um, I just got this new little mouse from my iPad and <laughs> I did it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, I did the best I could do today, people. <laughs> so I hope that wasn't so horrifyingly bad because <laughs> I think I might have to um, actually re record this one and do it again. <laughs> so uh, I want to thank you guys so much for showing up. If you um, go onto my website, um, let me pop this up again. Um, yeah, there's. There we go. If you go onto my website, you can save 20% off on your order right now by using the coupon code fall days. Um, the kits aren't on sale with this because my staff said that they would leave if I did that to them again, because <laughs> it was insane last time. Um, but if you go on to this kit, which is called the Stephanie kit, you can see that they're the better pictures um, than what I'm, I showed you today with making under a camera. Um, and the pictures look really, really good. So anyway, so I want to thank you guys for, for coming and joining in. Uh, tomorrow morning, you can um, get up and make yourself a nice Sunday breakfast and then hunker down for the day. Uh, first up tomorrow is Abby from thebeadplace.net. And um, I don't even know what she's making. I, I don't think I even know this. Maybe it was a necklace or something. But, you know, everybody's going to have a good day tomorrow. I'm sure there's going to be lots of uh, great things in the lineup. So thanks again for devoting your time and your energy and your love and your lovely uh, comments. I'm just going to go back to the comments here because they're not on. There we go. And, um, you know, we all really appreciate it. We say it all the time. I'm sure you're sick of hearing us say that, but we do really appreciate each and every one of you. And we appreciate all your hard-earned dollars that you spend in our stores that help us stay in business, that help keeping, you know, the whole thing going with providing you guys with lots of content and really beautiful beads. So, <laughs> 
Anyway, so thank you so much again. And um, you guys go off and have a really good night. I'm going to go collapse on the couch with my rum and coke because I'm stressed and tired. And <laughs> I know it's probably not as bad as I think it is. But anyway, thanks again, people. And I love you guys. And we will see you on Wednesdays at 1 o'clock. Uh, with uh, me and Savannah doing our new lives, all right? And that's going to be on Facebook, but it will stream to um, YouTube. And I'm hoping to have this all figured out again by then, all right? Take care, everyone. Have a good night.